Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. What's up, folks? It's that time. It's time for an always exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show. We talk all about all things like music, motivation, success, and so many other things. It's a free-flowing conversation. Of course, I'm joined today by my co-host, co-producer, Fantastic all-around guy, drummer, entrepreneur, Jim entrepreneur. McCarthy. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Entrepreneur. 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 Yeah. Yeah, so we've been knocking these things out, man, like talking to a lot of fantastic drummers. Today is no different. Are we having fun or what, Jim? It feels good yeah. to do these in person again, doesn't it? I know. I'm keeping my six feet from you. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, it just, it just breaks my heart that we had to do that for 700 days. I will never <laughs> recover. What did we learn from that? Just Absolutely nothing. nothing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Put some echo on that, buddy. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, so hey, we got some time straight constraints today. Usually we can meander for about two hours, see where things take us, but I want to shine a light on this gentleman today from the Chicago land, world class drummer, award winning drummer, seven years younger than me. And think speaking of seven years, seven point five years, he's been in calling Nashville home. <laughs> Um, he's an all around fantastic drummer for the last 21 years has been the drummer in Umphreys McGee. And you know, that's a cater categorized, uncategorizable band. They blend genres. It's an amazing thing. They've got 2,700 live shows under their belt, 14 studio albums, 21 years. My guest has been there. We're talking about our friend, Chris Myers. What's Whoa. up, pal? Whoa. Dude. What an introduction. Well, we try to go, wow. we try to go very Hollywood, you know, like cue the timpani. <laughs> but, um, I How mean, you doing, Rich? That, Thank you. That band of yours, you know, this is the, one of the joys of my life is, is I get to shine a light on my friends, old and new, and I get to do a deeper dive into their style. And so I was on the YouTube last night. I was watching all your rig rundowns and these drum solos, you know, promoting Pearl drums. It's You are such a fantastic all-around player. I mean, it's like this one video, you did this open drum solo. It started with kind of like a, a James Brown groove, but it had like more... Garibaldi in there and then before you know it you were into some Weckle and then some second line <laughs> stuff using every the rims and half rim well, shots and full rim shots and choking symbols and the bell of the symbol over here and the some ding ding harmonics <laughs> I was like this guy is great rum titty ding dings and dum dums so I mean I know where I mean your band gives you that ultimate platform to to play all these different styles but something tells me you you just always loved a lot of different kinds of music yeah uh that's probably why i don't get too many gigs because i just play too much i do all the styles at once in one minute <laughs> but your band i mean you're it's got to be great to, to be in a band like that where that it where it's like you're doing like a song that sounds like yes you're doing a song that sounds like zappa and then yeah. boom there's a straight down the middle michael jackson sounding thing Whoa. and then there's like a three four power six eight kind of a thing and everybody in the audience is i saw you guys at the rhyme and it was like your fans are rabid yes they are they're they're we're very grateful for them and they are part of our success and our build together we we're all artists almost together yeah united yeah and that's that's amazing and, and thanks for even noticing that i mean the merch i mean the website is fantastic um you guys have like posters and art pieces and wearable art and you of course you gotta have the coffee mugs and all that stuff <laughs> right so how did it happen for you how did you get on these guys's radars so basically i was going to grad school to paul in chicago <laughs> yeah back in the old days 2000 to 2002 and um had no recollection or knowledge of um freeze mcgee and i was doing local stuff and, um, you know, jobbing gigs, as they call them in Chicago, society gigs, weddings, yes. bar mitzvahs, yep. corporate parties. Get that tux. Yep. Yeah, I still have it, unfortunately, and it's really old and, and gross. Yeah, so I had So I that. finally uh, sold it. They're yeah. sold it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I um, <laughs> basically uh, was, you know, looking for a change of pace because the industry was also changing at that time, if you recall. Free downloads and studio yeah. work was becoming more scarce and that's exactly what i wanted to do yeah um and i managed to do some stuff which was great but i couldn't make a living doing it just like you know based on my generation so the option was doing live shows you know just basically touring and a friend of mine just told me uh, his name is brian abraham i owe it all to him 
And, uh, What's up, Brian? Yeah, and uh, he recommended me to audition for this band called Humphreys McGee, and I was like, Humphrey McWhat? <laughs> you know, I was like, this is what kind of a kind of rock and roll is this? Yeah, yeah. This yeah. Is, uh, <laughs> what is this scandalous? <laughs> no, but then I listened to it, and I was like, wow, this is amazing because these guys, um, you know, changed the styles, but in a tasteful way, <laughs> and they're very intelligent with the music and the yes. form, the arrangements. So I was like, well, I'm gonna try give this a shot. And so it turned out that the manager lived in 15 minutes from my house. I just, back then you had just press kits, right. you know, not right. E electronic. Yeah. Press. yeah. No EPK, uh, K's, just PKs. And, um, you would mail it, uh, drive it over to the mailbox. That's what I did. <laughs> Ironically, it was the first package they received of literally hundreds of applicants, um, which was very serendipitous. I think, you know, it was, Oh, so you were the first one to get it there. That was the first one, yeah, that they received and to get it there. Nice. So, <laughs> did they listen to anybody else, or was it just like this is the guy? Well, they did, but um, they the way they described it was I was like when I showed them my demo, which is a hilarious picture, by the way. The cover of my demo was like me in like a GQ suit nice. and like a really clean cut haircut, and me kind of doing a pose. And um, Olin Mills, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it was just a you know, a quick demo CD for me to just show you, uh, you know, any opportunity I can get for whatever in part of the industry. So I, I did that and, um, or they heard that and then they uh, came back and then they heard my other band, which is, uh, at that time was kick the cat, kick the cat. A yeah. Fusion band. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys are all my homies. I haven't seen them in about a couple months, but, uh, we, you know, we've always continued to have a friendship and we played together and toured and I, um, yeah, they heard that and they were like, whoa, shit, this is like more than we expected for our applicants. And they're like, this is going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. And then the rest, they, what was, was all the audition over the, like? It was like, hey, can gamut. you play the third song off of our 17th record? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But it wasn't the 17th at the time. It was, it was probably like the, the third. Fourth, third. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so who is this other fella, Mike Miro? So Mike Miro was the original member, original drummer. Yeah. And, uh, Rest in peace and, you know, oh. God rest his soul. Oh, man. So he, and he, he passed. That's why they needed He it. did. Uh, no, but he didn't pass uh, until later. Yeah. But anyway, he was basically uh, in the band because they were all at school together. It's The story is great. They went to Notre Dame and um, they were a success story from, you know, a place that yeah. normally doesn't bring or yeah. breed rock bands. Isn't you know? it South Bend, Indiana band? That's South yeah, Bend. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he was there and... Um, was with them for at least four or five years. And um, basically he uh, needed to make an opportunity or change in his life. And he made a, a career change and wanted to do pursue medicine and become wow. a doctor. Cause I think his dad really wanted him to go on that path as well. And um, he was open to it. So, you know, these, these things happen, life changes. And yeah. so he, he was just uh, leaving as of 2003, and I I yeah. auditioned. I played, uh, you know, the first New Year's show as a feature on one of the songs I learned, and the first song was called uh, "Hurt Bird Bath." Hurt Bird Bath? Yeah. I like that you guys don't take each other too seriously on the titles. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so so the guys in the band, you got Brendan, Joel. Um, Jake, Andy, Ryan, and that's you, Chris. I mean, it's, that's right. it's got to be a brotherhood all these years. 21 years, you finish each other's sentences. Does everybody live all over the place and you guys come to the first? Is that how it works? Yep, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, we had started, we started breaking off, I'd say, around 2000, maybe 10 or so. Um, everyone started moving away when they got married. And um, Joel's out in Santa Monica. Ryan's in uh, Charleston, South Carolina and uh, you know Jake is uh, he was in South Bend and now he's in uh, back in Niles Michigan where gotcha. he's from yeah. well actually he's in up, upstate Michigan uh, which is you know Traverse City gotcha yeah and then um, you know Andy's in Chicago again and yeah Brennan's there still he's been the one that's been holding fort in the city the longest the north side so yeah. Chicago yeah Chicago Chicago so uh um, <laughs> exactly best best spot for the deep dish are you were, were you a deep did you become a deep dish guy or like was is that your preference or He's would you Chicago like a New York for slice? crying out loud of course I know but but yeah but when you have a New York slice yeah. and you get the folded in half it's very mobile that is a valid it's, it's a valid point and um 
and you know, a tip of the hat to you know the New York style. And Chicago style is just what I grew up with, and yeah. they have a couple different types of you know, not just deep dish, but also your your thin crust and your stuffed crust. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And the, the only thing is that, that they cut squares instead of it's triangles. Squares. Well, you know who does that is... Um, <laughs> Sicilians. Yeah. Oh, I Sicilian, didn't know that. Because yeah, a Sicilian uh, slice is like a deep dish Chicago type of slice. You know, don't ask me how I know. Jets. That's yeah. awesome. Jets, Jets does a good de- deep dish locally here. Those words, oh, that's good to know. Strike those words from your mouth. Jets, Jets. is all right. Jets. Jets no. is pretty good. No. <laughs> No, this is always so a big. There will go? never be a, a a sponsor of this podcast. Ouch. Come on, you got to go with Joey's House of Pizza. You know those types of places. No, I'm just saying for a deep dish, yeah. Jets is pretty good because uh-huh. it's like you know point zero one miles from my house. It always gives me the runs. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, I mean, geez, you're talking to a guy that has the runs as a basic like um like my modus operandi. <laughs> <laughs> you have a glass of water. You got to go take a dump. It's like, hey guys, no, I had a hard stool today. It's a very special day. TMI. So, so, <laughs> we can go there sometimes. So, TMI so you guys are rocking. BMI. I like on the I like on the 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 website. You guys keep a list of the venues that you have played and how many times. I mean, that's like the. That's like a cool feature of a band that is a working band. I mean, you guys are playing all the cool spots. Bonnaroo, Lollapalooza, Austin City Limits, South by Southwest, Red Rocks, the Ryman. Saw you guys there. The Beacon. Mm. Got any favorite spots? Do you? Because you guys do wineries. You do theaters. You do festivals. You do um, sheds. Yeah. I mean, we, it's pretty We do cool. a lot of different things that they, you know, give us the opportunity to, uh, to attempt. And we're always open to the challenge and... Um, the rooms are always changing. Yep. Uh, they especially are these days for yeah. everyone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, Red Rocks is probably my favorite. I mean, it's undeniable, oh, right? Yeah. If you can do that, you know, that's a one to check off the list. And um, that is, as far as venues go, I got to be honest, the the Fox Theater in Oakland is is a beautiful room. Beautiful. They re-renovated it and it's, you know, it's, it's always a, a pleasure to play there as well. Yeah. But I mean, I got to say the rhyming, so much history and the room sound is, is amazing. Yeah. You feel comfortable, you feel at home and the people are always so warm yep. from the audience. And yeah, so I'd say places like that. Yeah, and that's your hometown venue, the Ryman Auditorium. Yes, that's right. Are you loving Nashville? Because you lived also in, in sunny Los Angeles. Um, yes, I love it here. Um, I love living here, just living. Yeah. And uh, cost of living, of course, as everyone says, who's a transplant. Um, but you know, I love it here because of the, the culture and the people and, um, the friendliness. Cause you were in North Hollywood, right? Before earlier, or were you in uh, Van Nuys? Or Van Nuys. Yep. Van Nuys. The, yeah. Van- <laughs> you got to say it like an Armenian though. Yeah. <laughs> how, does that, how does that sound? I don't even know. No, but uh, Glendale is the home <laughs> of the most Armenians on the planet other than Armenia. Yes, that's right. Glendale, California. Yeah. The big wide streets. Yeah. Tons of parking. Yeah, tons of parking, uh, very tight families, yeah. connections in the neighborhoods. And um, I lived just blocks from that that ex- that culture. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I liked L.A. for what it was. It was amazing, actually, with all the f- world-class players that were there. You can just go see in a weeknight. Yes. Go with all the hiking trails in yeah. the Santa Monica Mountains. Yep. Amazing. But, um, you know, didn't want to, like, do the thing, you know, where I live in my car half the day every day. Yes. That's got, horrible. Got old, right? Yeah, it su- kind of sucks the soul out of you. Um, and even coming from Chicago, that was challenging. Yeah. <laughs> well, Chicago is very much a mass tra- transit city. The cold, though. Yes, the bitter cold, the lake effect. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, you yeah. just get, you grow up in are your- you, Are your folks still there? Yes. They're, uh, so where I, I grew up in uh, Inverness, which is a northwest suburb, just directly northwest um, near Palatine, which- yeah. As drummers may know this, maybe the older ones, there was an, a famous drum. There was a famous drum store, you know, called the Drum Pad. Yes, of which we know some people, such as uh, Victor Salazar. Victor Salazar was the guy that said, Vic's "Do you know shot? Chris Myers?" And I said, "I want to." And he goes, "I've heard, I've heard of him." He goes, "This is a guy you got to get to know. He can play anything in the world." And it's, it's true. Well, God bless him. He's a sweet man. He's an ambassador to the drum community, just like um, globally. Yeah, just like, like you, like I mean, like like Dom, like Dom. You know, God rest his soul, Famularo. Yeah, oh yeah. Dom, yes. Yeah, he was like the Tony Robbins of. He's like of the you, drum. You want to play the drums? You <laughs> can do it. That's a great comparison. Yeah, totally. Yeah. This vibe and 
his stature and dom yes victor is very much a, a gearhead as well by nature he's like a drum tech and a drummer yes and he it, he he reminds you that it's okay to do to have four or six pedals or thir- you know maybe 10 cymbals yeah. maybe more i, I remember <laughs> Vic, vic's rite of passage for any new friendship is getting that person on his gigantic rig which <laughs> yeah. is like a it's like the ss basio you know yes kind of a thing yeah yeah, which I believe wasn't he his drum tech for. He was, and he uses that stuff creatively. It's like you know, Vic loves playing a gigantic drum set with the spokes and the yeah <laughs> the stacks and the you know. Yeah, I think he had beautiful. like a trash can on a remote pedal or something. <laughs> I mean, just just great stuff. We 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 love Vic. Now, am I yep. right in saying that your tour is starting this year, July fourth, at the in Westport, Connecticut? That's correct. Mm. Um, we're. Yes, the Levitt Performing Arts Center. The Levitt Performing Arts Center, yeah. and um, it's I'm actually excited about that because it's a really, from what I heard, it's really pretty up there. Yeah, and it's kind of like an old, like an outdoor experience, if I understand right. Like yeah. Pavil- or like a like Ravinia, as we call it in Chicago, the Ravinia, <laughs> you know, venue is very bougie. Aesthetic is bougie, a totally bit. bougie. I like I like cool. I like packs. I like performing arts centers. It's like the it's nice and clean and nice mm-hmm. little dressing rooms. And so what's on your guy's rider? Do you guys, do you get, you get a little red wine on there. What's the, like, what, what's the cheese? Are you sophisticated? Or are you just like, nah, we're more of like Cheetos and Coors Light. No, we uh, definitely are somewhere in between both of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, uh, I'd say uh, Budweiser is what my boys love yeah. for beer. And then um, I'd say uh, Wheat Thins, which is kind of boring. Wheat, wheat yeah. Thins. Wheat. Yeah. And then um, a cool whip. Yes, no cool whip. What's like, a, cool? What's a specific cool. thing for you on the road? Are you getting like protein bars on there, or like <laughs> almonds that are imported from Chile or something? Yes, a big turkey leg. Yes. Uh, no. Um, I like uh, you know generally just like charcuterie. Nice. Um, I also like uh, yeah protein related things, but I don't. You know, I just eat the meals yeah. that we get to us, and I try not to eat too much. Snacking, um, but snack wise, yeah, wheat thins and uh, wheat thins. I, d- I try to avoid the uh, the sodium chips. Yeah, um, even though it's unavoidable that you know everything's got sodium in it. But I think that you know I try to be as healthy as I can. Yeah, but the problem is I have a guilty pleasure, and it's chocolate. Yeah, mm. dude, milk, do, you do, do you do the chocolate? 80? Oh, milk. Chocolate. Yeah, but the thing is, what kind of milk chocolate? Hershey's or Cadbury? Uh, it's like those are the good ones. Hershey's it, the wax. I think it's called Ghirardelli's or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. you can't you can't go wrong there. Those yeah. are with the caramel. Oof. Oh yeah. Why am I speaking up for all the food segments? I mean, holy crap! Yeah, Wait a minute. we are good with the Ghirardelli. Yeah, yeah. The, the, I know. The, the assortment pack. Yes, with the, the caramel. Oh yeah, and even some. Occasionally, we'll get some really nice, healthy. You know, dark chocolate with, yeah. uh, you know, a, sal- a saltier mix in it. Yeah. You know, but, what's really funny with the sodium is, is that, yeah, you probably should avoid added sodium to things, but I never really used to salt my food. I'm a pepper guy. Like I go to town on the pepper, right? Nice. But as far as they're saying that salt is something that is craved by all animals in the animal kingdom. Matter of fact, you see these goats that are on the side of the mountain and they're just like, all the way up and they're just like on the side of these li- and they, so they can go up there and blah, 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 lick the, the, the salt on this mountain how's that, how's that go again <laughs> it's, 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 that's so, pretty good so don't be afraid of salt you need it but right. yeah probably not the ones in the lace potato chips so what do you do for for fitness do you have like a thing like are you a walker or are you a runner do you like put heavy things over your head i like to um i like to do cardio off the road yeah um on the road I try to get out, but I don't. And I, lately I haven't, and I've been bad about it. So you save up all your caloric burn for the drumming segment of your day. Yeah, but what I do try to do is just, I definitely do stre- stretching. Um, mm. But I do that, of course, when the body's warmed up. Yeah. Um, I do I do warm-ups during the day for drum drumming. Yeah. And, but I do it with a sense of looseness and always keeping yeah. limbs just moving. Uh, but yeah, I should... I used to do more exercise. I'll hit the gym, uh, the fitness center maybe once every two tours. Yeah. And then yoga, I'm just now getting back into after oh, cool. about a decade. <laughs> it's nice because you get your little mat, you know. Yes. You go into the venue in the morning with your little mat and you say hi to the security people and they're, yeah, you know. Yeah. It's fun. And yeah. And then you just annoy everybody and walk in like, you know, in your yoga pants and you just say, hey, you, 
do you have my my soy milk in the in the yeah, fridge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really did ask for that. It's nice to meet you. Anyway, uh, it, this is what my day was like. You know, you have my bucket of fried chicken too, please. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, and and then mix it right. yeah. <laughs> Now, what's this documentary you guys got? It just came out June eleventh, frame by frame. Oh yeah, that was a. Um, it was a basically just kind of like a deluxe offering we gave at that time, but it's it's a great. It's got an unbelievable footage of past and present that mm. the editing was amazing on it. Um, it's not necessarily like a typical rock doc documentary about a band, but it's more about sharing all the fun moments we had with the footage. Yeah. And these are sort of special things that our fans like. It's not just the most, um, you know, commercial middle of the road, you know, approach. We do things and release things that are a little more deeper than that, more archival. Yeah. Cause our fans are hard. They're like, Part of that jam band culture where it was originally right, like Deadheads, which is like the, you know, right? The blue first generation, first wave yeah. of hardcore tapers and fans who just follow the band for hundreds of shows. So a, a you'll year. see a lot of familiar faces at multiple shows. Yes. Wow. It's great. It's a blessing. Did you ever um, play uh, The Gathering of the Vibes? Is that Ring a Bell in Bridgeport, sure. Connecticut? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We yeah. played it. That was a, um, that was something that we had to do when I, on my first radio station. We did a whole weekend of broadcasting there. Man, you had to bring a bar of soap. Yeah, right. Oh well, my goodness. A yeah, lot of hippies. it gets gets pretty, you know, yeah. heady up there, oh, as yeah. they say. But um, no, that's cool yeah. because gathering the vibes brings uh, past and present artists and some definitely members of the dead with their projects. Yeah. So I, I had a funny story there. Funny you mention it. I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Mickey Hart what story. I'm here for. Yeah, Mickey Hart. My God. So um, I'm just backstage, you know twiddling with my my symbol you know positions and taking my symbols off after the kit after the show i did notice that on my right stage right jim uh i'm sorry mickey hart was sitting there with his mallet sticks on the side of a case sitting on it just playing along with the band you know just amazing just <laughs> and i was like whoa that's you don't see that every day so then i i'm, I'm backstage and mickey came up which is um i think on you know Unlike him, usually he's very, you know, he's very cool and, and his uh, stature, you know, is yeah. very stoic. Introvert? A little kind of introverted? No, no, hmm. not at all. He's definitely a com like kind of a community leader with drumming. Yeah. Like his Planet Drum Records. Do you remember that? The Planet Drums, yeah. It's very, you know, influential. So anyway, yeah, he comes up and he's, I'm trying to be cool. And he's like, yeah, and he's kind of stepping. He looks like a, like a baseball coach from the 70s. He's got the kind of pants and he's, his arms folded and he's walking towards you. Like yeah. he's ready to... Like let's chew go. you out, but Get he's on like, base, kid, let's go." Yeah, <laughs> but instead hey, you got he's a like, lucky "Strike, yeah, got some luckies." Yeah, pretty much yeah. just came right up, and he's like, uh, "Notice some pretty fancy double base footwork. Most impressive, most impressive." <laughs> He said it twice. <laughs> Most impressive. And I was like... Two-time Mickey, two-time Mickey. So I said, thank you. Uh, and I didn't really say much else because I didn't want to be like, you know, that fan, mm. super fan guy. But I was also kind of like, also trying to be like, well, the, I'm not from the jam scene, man. I'm dude, a jazz guy. Yeah, but I mean, you're, you're, you're like, so, a, you are like, I tell everybody I'm an overeducated rock drummer. You are an overeducated everything <laughs> drummer. I mean, his style is if like you took like... You know, Vinnie Paul's feet and Weckl's phrasing and cleanliness and then the da David Garibaldi's control right over on. the stick heights and dynamics with some Cobham singles in there. Wow. And then there's some then there's some like, you know, uh, Gene Krupa showmanship. It's coming from one person. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's that's very kind of you. Rich. But you get Thanks. to do it. Like like I mean, I've listened to a lot of those guys, and maybe some of that stuff is in there somewhere. Absolutely. But I, I yeah. don't get to do that. Here, on here's my the job. thing, though: is your humility is quite <laughs> staggering. You, yeah. you're, you're like, thank you very much. You're aware of this stuff. Come on. Well, right? people I mean, talk. Yeah. I mean, you know, he won the drum award. Dude, what was it? Uh, well, hey, you were you and I were both on the cover of MD in That's 2018. Right, That's we right. did it, man. Yeah. Oh we did God. it together. Our parents are like so happy. My mom framed it. It's like right on the way to the bathroom at her house in the in the toilet hallway. But then she's like, "Who's this blonde head, blue eyed?" Smuck here on the front cover. It's and so you're like, that's my friend Chris. I know. And you, <laughs> in 2011, lucky. you were the best jam band drummer by <laughs> Drum Magazine. So, like, you Thanks. are you are award winning, and your and your peers, you know, recognize you for your for your talents. Yeah. And then you know your companies, uh, Pearl, Evan, Zildjian. I saw some of those Dan Dawes pads up there. What's the appeal with the Dawes pads versus like 
some of the more you know big box stuff i find that like just like a lot of drummers could relate to this when if you you know assimilate a lot of samples and sequences and manual playing live of electronics yeah we just have a difficult time finding something that's road friendly yeah. and that you always have to keep replacing it and i won't name any brands but you know what i'm talking about sure so you also want to find a pad that's going to you know give you the performance that you need from a, a better sound module it gives you better fidelity on those samples yeah so i i just decided to upgrade to the dawes pads which i don't know if you know the story but the dawes pads to my understanding used to be the super ball company you remember the super ball when yes. we were kids we yeah. bouncy ball. throw it on the ground yeah. and it bounces way up there well they eventually gave shares out or, or the business went away and then they you know, investors put it in the drum pad or this yeah. drum yeah. electronic pad kit uh, called Dawes Pads. And but it the was Dawes Dan pads Dawes. Are, but Dan Dawes is, and he's he's very much like underground. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind not of like, doesn't really it's not big box store stuff. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So you, but you have to do your research and you find that it's the most durable pad, one of the, or yeah. the, uh, and anywhere. And it, that super ball material helps get that bounce you want and it's thick enough. I mean, if Neil Peart used it, and also, um, I mean, it's a nice nine piece inch of nails. Hardware. Yeah, they use them. Then th that's it. All, you, you know, bets are off. So what's up, Dan? Yeah, Dan came to one of my clinics at MI, and he gave me. I know he goes. I like you know. I like these colors. I know you like these colors. So yeah, that was a thing too. <laughs> that was sweet of him, man. He's a, he's a cool guy, man. Now a band. This there's we're just all over the place, but uh, I was just a little bit curious. A band of that size, six people. I've been in a band with six people. It always just seems like there's one or too many people you know in that sure. amount of it but you guys it's it's it, it works incredible what is the writing process like and how do you guys record are you recording in the same studio all the time do you have a producer yes so we have over the years stuck with the same idiom which is getting together first to write together like the old school band style wow right nice which is tedious to some um but courageous for others or whatever you want to call it. Um, authentic. Yes. Um, we, we do that usually up at Jake's studio. We used to, for many years, go up to his personal studio with all of his analog gear, his nice. tape machines and, or he had a DAP machine actually from the nineties and, uh, a great board. And, um, it'd be up in a, a shed up in Niles, Michigan, which is basically a real remote town in Michigan, kind of blue collar yeah. dirt roads. So we would be off of, the, you know, the reservation for a, mo a whole weekend, right. And then once we write all the, the music together, um, we'll keep the demos if we like it, or we'll just redo them in a, in a big city studio. And we used to record uh, and have continued to record with Greg Majors, who uh, I live right by in oh, Bellevue, who's yeah. also a notable ninja here that a lot of people should continue to to reach out to or get to know. He's Greg Majors, okay. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. He works... Um, in his own home studio like me in Bellevue, but he uh, has been doing Humphreys Records forever. Yeah. And we had a producer for the longest time from Chicago named Manny Sanchez, who uh, moved to LA now, but he uh, was a huge influence on us to get us to be more legit uh, with a producer helping us define that moment in the style. But we've always been our, our self, you know, produced kind of band as well. It's and awesome that you guys with six people can come together democratically <laughs> yeah. and make, you know, decisions without getting butt hurt and breaking up the band. That's true. Um, you know, we're all still an imperfect and very dysfunctional family, just like anyone else. Oh, yes. But when it comes to recording, uh, we have guys like Jake, who's a, first of all, gr like a, he's like an encyclopedia of rock and country and any style of music, really. Yeah. Um, He's just a brilliant genius of a guy with with recording um, concepts, and then all the guys in their own right, you know, bring some kind of magic and just, you know, yeah. something that makes sense, uh, structure and arrangement. Um, we also keep it like you said; we keep it progressive, and we don't try to, you know, adhere or uh, conform to yeah. anything. We're very lucky for that. So. I mean, you guys are. There is a genre. Because if you guys, if Tower Records still existed, they would be looking to put you in a specific section, right? Just to help things along. But now it's almost even better in this world where it's just like there's, you're a genreless. 
you guys are all over the place. Now, is there a type of fan? You were talking about your fans. Is there a mold or is it all over the place? It's not really all over the place in the universal world of the music industry, yeah. but it's pretty, I'd say it's various with people who come from progressive music to, you know, or, or, you know, uh, traditional jam music, maybe subcultures from a little bit of the metal scene. Yeah. Uh, they actually really, you know, there's a few metal bands and people we know that we've looked up to that actually have heard of us only for some reason, they probably appreciate the guitar work, sure. you know, um, Jake and Brennan are a dueling, uh, guitar powerhouse that just, you know, it's like the Allman brothers, how they were with yeah. a lot of harmonizing yes. unison lines, the same way with Brennan and Jake and they do it live, yeah. you know? So, yeah, I mean, we, we do what we can. <laughs> I mean, with 14 yeah. studio albums, it's got to be pretty difficult putting a set list together. Now, when you go on a tour, are you guys changing it nightly? Oh, uh, yeah. We have a different set every night. That's incredible. So oh, you gosh. literally, you are, well, the average, you know, Umphrey's record has 15 tracks on it. I've seen 18 and you got 14 records. So I'm trying to do the math. So is everybody responsible for the entire body of work at all times? I'd say so. We, wow. we split the song splits though, you know, when it comes to the business side, a little differently than equal, but it's sensible. Yes. And we, you know, it, it makes sense. Yeah. But I think that when it comes to improvising, we open up, it's important that we all accept each other as they are, as who they are and how they want to, you know, uh, express themselves. Uh, we do come together though as a team uh, at moments to realize, okay, now we could put that aside the, and then just play something together like this or this style or this vibe yeah. or that. And then for a few minutes and then, you know, one guy will, will gauge how much time that is and be very calculated with the, the controlled chaos. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think that the idea of changing the set list every night, Jim, isn't this interesting is that is that, you know, when we go on tour, we'll, we'll do our 30 shows at the back end of the year, and it's the same 24 songs every night. So it's all literally about just execution, yes. right? Yeah. Now, you got, you got to put your thinking caps on when you got a different show every night. That yep. keeps the brains, the neurons firing. Yeah, pretty much. Um, sometimes, for better or worse, <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, players who play in progressive, more, you know, I wouldn't say obscure, but eclectic kind of you know, yeah. uh, environments tend to, I think, you know, get really excited on an art on one night when you're really hitting it on, on all cylinders, you just feel it yeah. blowing. And then some nights it's like, yeah, you're not sure if this or even that all these components are connecting and that can be a little nerve wracking, but you know, as long as we just keep plowing through and then you listen back to the recording, I was going to ask you, you guys thing. study like game tapes. I, I used to do it and I had to because <laughs> Like you said, it is it's chaos that we're we're doing. It's chaos, you know. It's crazy. Uh, it's crazy. It's, I can't Look, believe it. Come on, do it <laughs> there, now. There we go. Nice. Was, Off we go to I, the races. I was gonna warn you. I might get into Christopher Walken. <laughs> you guys can have a walking off, a walking uh, battle. Yes. Of sorts. At yeah. some point. I and mean, we will we will start talking like we have no yeah. punctuation, <laughs> no commas, semi no commas. Well, you know, Shatner was very big on changing was, the emphasis of the various syllables. That's right, and he would he practice it in a million different <laughs> he ways. So he and Walken were very similar. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. To the ship, we go. We are going here. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's kind of. A backwards <laughs> enunciation. So yeah, I, yeah. So basically, going back to what we were saying, I think we, you know, use the algorithmic, you know, all things Umphreys dot com uh, stats of the songs played because when we write set lists, we have to keep tabs on how many times we've played that song in this given city or market. Wow, that's that's so why we do that, as well as for the the, wow. the geeky nerdy fans that love that stuff. So there's, there's got to be an AI app for that by now. Yeah, what oh, do yeah. you think? I mean, I'm, I'm sure setlessgrinder.com. <laughs> I don't know somebody, but I mean, it's 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 almost like Dave Matthews. Like we we had a gift certificate, me and the gal Kara. What we were gonna go like go see. Um, yeah, we got yeah we got like a, like a, a 
a gift card to go see a, a, a band. And we're like, oh, let's go see Dave Matthews. It's been forever. And they're known for changing the set list every night. Yes. And so she wanted to hear Crash. She's like, he better F and play Crash. And so yeah. you, you watch the whole show for three hours or whatever it was. Yeah. I just know I peed twice. Um, <laughs> he never played Crash. He didn't play any of his, his hits from what it sounds like. It, right? it, it was, it was he, I don't know, maybe he was like, okay, we're in Music City. A lot of musicians here. So let's like, sh let's shred. You know, I think it's not even, I don't think Dave, he danced, he, he moves to the beat of his own drum from what I've gathered as a person when I, he's an, he's an amazing person, kind of uh, eccentric. Yeah. yeah. And just like anyone in that band, the spirit they possess is the, is the confidence and the, the joy of changing it up when you want to change it up. Yeah. And they've, they have also been in a comfortable situation with that. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing. They've had commercial success as well. So they are a, a kind of a. An enigmatic thing yeah you know yeah. now did any of your songs break through traditional radio i'd say um uh, like college radio maybe right or? yeah and we also had i think moments with cover songs uh that's a good question <laughs> i don't think we have um commercial success i mean we've kind of We've done collaborations uh, one time with Huey Lewis, yeah, as we tell, call Uncle Huey. Oh my God, you got to tell us about that, because Jim, huge fan. Yeah, all right. I mean, I am too, but yeah. Jim's on a kick. Well, let me tell you. If Fun you, music to play. Have you yeah. ever met him by chance? We interviewed him on the show. I saw that. Yeah. And he was able to hear everything okay? Because he's having yeah. hearing issues. Uh, yeah. Well, he was he was listening to ambient sound off of his computer, I would imagine, yes. or some sort of you know monitoring system. So he didn't have any ears or headphones on, which I would imagine would trigger his um, condition. Yeah, and which, which I obviously you know I don't need to it's horrible to, to to elaborate. It's not my business, but we are friends with him after all these years, of yeah. which we met at the what I told you was the Jammies, which was uh, the jam band version of the Grammys. Amazing. Yeah, back yeah. in 2007 or something like that, we met him uh, in the most eclectic group of artists that collaborated that that evening with us, and he was one of them. And um, ever since we've been we've been friends, he gave he collaborated with us on a song called "Women Wine and Song." Yeah, and that's a that was kind of a tip of the hat to Lal George, you know, from Little Feet. Yeah, back in the day, uh, that kind of feel and v vibe and. Um, and he uh, played harmonica and sang on it in the courses. And then he got us on Jimmy Kimmel as well. Sounds great. Oh, wow. People, wow. you know, helped. He helped with it. Yeah. He said, he seems like such a, yeah. just a generous, you know, wants to give back and pay it forward. Yeah. And did you watch how he was on the um, We Are the World documentary? Did you watch that? Yes. And how just like in awe he was. I mean, you yeah. think about it at that particular point in time, he'd only been like a rock star. Yeah. For maybe two years. He was very humble and grateful for being there, but he, right. all, and he killed it too. Totally. Yeah. Brought it. Well, the reason is, is I think it's because of his personality. He is literally yeah. the coolest guy yeah. I have ever met in the in music industry. Yeah. Beautiful. And his stories are the best too. He yeah. tells you the good stories, the... The, the more known stories, but he's just so cool and everything. I, I love this vulnerability. You know? I was surprised at it, that he was talking about his Meneers so transparently. He's like, it is what it is, man. Yeah. You know, it's not very uh, often that you come across somebody of such a big stature like that that's willing to would admit a weakness. You yeah. know, I appreciate that about John Bon Jovi. Yeah. You know, he did that whole docu-series. Yeah, that document is very, right? it's very, cool. very brave. Dude. Very, very brave. And it's like, he didn't have to do that, but I think it was like, you know what? I just feel like, I have a feeling that he, there's a lot more to that story that he was, let me put this out there and, you know, get the fans warmed up to the notion that I may not be able to do this anymore. I really want to do it. Yeah. But, you know. Well, you know, Huey's always been just that way, even casually. Mm -hmm. So he just kind of, he's kind of a, a pioneer, like, like a Bob Dylan guy, but not so introverted, more the extroverted version. The extroverted he, Bob Dylan. And he, he grew, he grew up with a lot of, you know, the, 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 um, Northern California greats of the, you know, more hippie, you know, kind of yeah. culture. Mm -hmm. And he grew up with that as well, but he became a pop star as well. So he's, he's, he's got a, you know, multifaceted yeah universe totally and connections it's, it's just so interesting to see drummers various backgrounds because we had bill bill gibson on the show and, we're, and i was like yes now you are a you're a, of course of an overtrained drummer and he goes i gotta let you in on something <laughs> i have never had a lesson in my life he's in the 70s he's taking lessons now you know that's 
That's he's insane. You know, I I believe I remember him saying that too. He's yeah. a I don't, I don't I'm not trying to name drop at all, but he he's a friend and um Bill you did mention baby. You drop something. It's right there. Oh. Yeah, sorry. I'm uh, joking. Yeah, I uh I was so gullible. I just went with that. I mean, but, to, but to 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 be to have your 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 sound that solid and your musical choices that solid and create those everlasting drum parts and execute them on all those television shows. Yeah. No drum lessons? That's like great. You know, that probably went to his advantage because yeah. you know, some sometimes things stick better when you don't overthink it, you yeah. know? Like playing just that solid pocket which he did like a jeff percaro kind of player yes yeah was all was needed well even even towards the latest albums you look at you know small world and perfect world those are really intricate involved songs that's true you know no, the horn stuff the horn yeah. stuff yeah ba, ba, dun, 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 you know what I mean? Oh, it was, it's all kind of Motown, yeah. Stax Records kind of stuff, which he grew, he grew up playing. A lot of, yeah, a lot of doos, get a Yeah. Um, yeah who, that, who are your guys? Who are you? Who are your round, Mount Rushmores? Like, why did oh. you get into drumming? Because here's the deal: the year was 1976. I started playing drums. That was one year before. That was like when your dad had a sparkle in his eyes. Yeah, and then you were born the next year. <laughs> <laughs> better late than never yeah. drummers usually playing time perfectly but not on time hey. yes. how about that give me a splash jim okay okay uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, there we go zing well you know when i think of drummers <laughs> with tr you know true vigor an absolute just reckless abandon. Explore the I can't help specs. you know thinking of the professionalism and the presence and the charisma <laughs> of Rich Redman. <laughs> you have to do the. He's growl. my Mount Rushmore, without a doubt. <laughs> Every time I'm in the seat in the room, he's playing the backbeat, and it goes pow, pow. Oh, and like a dog, <laughs> you know, bow wow, or maybe a cat, you know, meow, meow. Kick the cat. Shock yeah. to the heart. <laughs> Get a lot of like. You got a lot of like uh, dog lovers at the kick cat to <laughs> kick the cat show. Yeah. So like, oh, actually, we get more like the opposite. Um, not lovers. I'm sorry. Not the opposite. What I'm saying is we get activists sometimes because that was a very. Oh my god! Really? Well, this is this. The name of that band was not the greatest idea, but it was it was named a band. We were named the band Kick the Cat in nine back in '96. Yeah. Before. That was ever an issue yeah so when we rebranded the band and tried to tour like a few years ago which we did and it was a lot of fun um we had a little little trouble with the you know modern day culture everyone's got a trouble with something <laughs> i know it's lighting up people we're it's not actually something. kicking the cat right i know and we had to start well what we'd say is kick is the name of the cat see kick the cat yes it's like and, and the comma cat. Kick, yeah. comma the cat <laughs> oh my god <laughs> So <laughs> you were anyway. obsessed with getting this down. Yeah. Did you see the Super Bowl commercial where they were, he was just like completely like he's driving up to drive throughs and everyone's doing a Christopher Walken impression. Oh, uh, no. And he's just like, yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. yeah he's probably he's so, so over it by now. <laughs> but you does know? anybody do <clears throat> Al Pacino? Oh, you when know. I'm there listening to a, a band, all I care about are the drums. <laughs> Pocket, this guy is over here going, whoa. <laughs> wow, Hello, man. Yeah. So is this like a pastime? You like this? Like I a, grew do you up, try to do impressions? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, was never a good, I mean, good I was never a good actor, so yeah. I just said, well, I can do impressions. <clears throat> That's so, great, because uh, there's, there's a lot of comedians and actors that are like, I don't do impressions. You know yeah, what I mean? right. Frank Caliendo does the best Al Pacino. Agreed. Down. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. And... Yeah. Um, you comedy fan? You got the made like do you follow like sure Marin or Gaffigan or or Matt Fife? What's his name? Rife. Yeah, Matt Rife. Matt That's Rife right. is very popular. I like Matt Rife. Yeah. yeah. Um. Actually, Marin's great. Yeah. I yeah. like his show too. He has a podcast. Too, yeah. Right? Yeah. He just yeah. And What's he, it called? He, he um the Mark Marin show. I know. He he basically, basically, WTF. You know. WTF. Yep. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you guys. Um. Yeah. So he's great and. Um, I, you know, I just I just try to discover comedians when I can, yeah. um, and I'm pretty open minded towards the satire. Yeah. Um, Bill Burr does 
occasionally is like really brash as we all know but you know what i <laughs> There are moments where he takes me out. I think it's just like, he oh, is, I just feel that. He is yeah. great. He is great, but he is, he's a little shouty. You yeah, know? yeah, very. He shoots from the angry New Yorker. Yeah, he's like, kind of constantly getting up here. No, but yeah. he's, I think he's Bostonian. Is he Bostonian? Yeah. Wow, no kidding. I think so. Well, I apologize. He's a Boston still. guy, Boston. Yeah, interesting. Well, anyway, um, yeah, I forgot what we were. Uh, well, we were talking oh, about. Oh, we're talking about. We're talking about Mount the Mount Rush. Rushmore of drummers. Yeah. Well, of course. There's just no denying. Um, I don't have favorites, as you know. We we're doing clinics. Hard to say there is the the greatest this or the greatest that. The more you realize when you start diving in to the history of drummers and all of the people, you just realize there is no favorite. You know. Yeah. Um, you but can it, you can still have a favorite. But was there a but guy that was like that? That was like the tipping point for you to pick up the sticks. Okay, well let's start with that. The chronological order. Here we go. No one has ever done this. I don't have four. I might have more, but I'll try to make it four. Dude, do it in order. That's great. No, it doesn't have to be four. It could be forty. So, and go. And between, if I had to choose between Bonham and Stewart, I'm going to go with Stewart. Um, Bonham, I yes, absolutely, one hundred percent. But Stewart. <laughs> Was just had so a unique. flash and a certain feel that I ever since I was just coming out of the womb, I, I just felt it. Me he, too. Was, he was very reggae. Yeah, yeah. Was pop, pop punk, just lively, sunny sounds. Feels like you know you're listening to a, like a cheetah playing the drums. <laughs> <laughs> you know, listen to his even his like cadence of regular speech. He sounds like Christopher Walken. You're like adopted. Yeah, you're like <laughs> it's cheetah. It sounds. It's like. You know, I'm not even trying. You're not even trying. That's it's amazing. just coming out naturally. <laughs> yeah. You know, the next thing you got to master is the, the Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Oh, that's Have a hard you, one. You got to talk like yeah. you're an old person. And you frame. Yeah. You know, like you're talking about it. Every time my wife gets up, Courtney went to the refrigerator. Yeah. And in there she found last night's dinner. <laughs> and it wasn't anywhere near as good as it was the previous evening. <laughs> yeah. I love, it's like, I love like the stratosphere. So, yes. Yeah, so was <laughs> evaporating. <laughs> Stuart Copeland and, and me and you are were, are tight. Awesome. Yeah. There was yeah. like two. There was three different cabs. Probably Alex Van Halen, Peart, yep. and Copeland back yes. in the day. Yeah, right? and I loved all of them, but yeah. in all different ways. But I have to say, if I edged out anyone from them, it's Stuart. And then um, after that, a big influence was hmm. Uh, well, I always got a I always got a tip the hat to Buddy. Yeah, Buddy Rich. Yeah. yeah. Which is arguably, tech, in terms of technical feel or, you know, um, approach, probably one of the strongest, greatest of, of all time. Yes. Um, in terms of, uh, let's see, after that, okay, the third, I'd say the the third or fourth is Vinny Kaliuta. Sure. 100%. He's the that. only drummer nowadays that, well, no, there's so many that are all around, but with him, I find that he's everything he touches turns to gold, yep. you know, and kind of player risk taking turns to gold. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just now everything he touches. <laughs> Ooh, this guy so turns to get gold. This on another drum podcast. Here this I is, am talking to this yeah. guy about turning things to gold. <laughs> See the fact that Jim Football. is here, it takes it to another place. It just amps up the silliness. And then, so yeah, when you get older Stuart, life. Yes. And, uh, uh, but trying to think of a fourth, <laughs> Um, Jim McCarthy. Keith, I'll be honest with you. Um, like a straight groove guy or something? Keith, Keith Carlock, who's oh, yeah. a good friend, as we all know here yeah. now, which we're lucky to have him. He's, I'd have to say, he's probably my fourth. Did you steal his those those things? Uh, I wouldn't say I've steal, uh, stolen them. Yeah. I just try to attempt them yeah. and uh, see what becomes the Chris Myers version of that. I, I like to throw it up. I throw, I like to throw them around a little bit just on your trash can endings, right? You know, yes. like the blues, the blues, the blues, the blues, the blues, blah, blah, bang. Yeah. That little tip of a hat to Keith and Tony and, you know. Yeah, he's, um, if I, 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 maybe I forgot Steve Gadd. I mean, geez. Steve Gadd, of course. Uh, yeah. So if there was a fifth Weckle. president on there, I'd, Weckle's did great. You go, did you go yeah. through that a phase, a Weckle phase? I mean, did you That's perm your hair you like that? that? Um, I'm, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Um, the hair, no. But, I, had that, uh, I had that VO5 mullet, yeah. <laughs> he's actually, uh, yeah, he's he's a really cool guy, too. He's really nice. Uh, and quiet, like He's kind of more on the quiet side when I met him, but mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe yeah. he's not, but I, he's really cool. Yeah, Vinny, I got to meet once uh, in Chicago uh, on a gig, and he was just, I didn't want to bother him too much. Yeah. I, I get too nervous and star-studded with 
You know, when you meet do your you heroes get, do you and you don't want to. Yeah, you get starstruck a little bit. Do you? Even by celebrities, too. Because, yeah. they, because really? these people can probably take a couple of lessons from you. I mean, any drummer in the world would be able to. You would be able to teach them some shit. Because uh, you just got so much facility, man. It's just, and so much musicianship. Hey, this you. record, Zonky, 2016, where you guys were like doing mashups. You got this one song. It's very, it's like your most spun song on Spotify. You can't rock my dreams face. Yeah. It's a mashup of rock with you, dreams, and you. I can't feel my face. That's correct. Amazing. Yeah, it's outrageous. Yeah, we, um, we found that a concept record like that was something that I don't think any, too many bands have done. I mean, uh, very high level. And we we put them some time into that. We it originally started as just a uh, an event we do for Halloween shows. Yeah, yeah. where the we would just create our own arrangements of mashing up like, and it's originally a DJ culture thing. Yeah, where they would just do the you know the instrumentals from and a vocal <laughs> from another. Yeah, and in, uh, we're like, why can't a band do that? So we're gonna try that. So Smart. thanks. Yeah, we um, <laughs> luckily I got to do you know the I can't feel my face part. And then um, that's not easy to do because uh, that singer's just fabulous. Yeah. And I don't okay, have any business doing that. you sing with the band too, right? Yes. I do backgrounds usually, uh, I, but I, I do covers. Oh, I can't believe you You can do the backgrounds and play that insane <laughs> music, dude. Right? Well, I started playing. Yeah. At, at, I think it's just like anything else. I started when I was 12, yeah. singing and playing because nice. we needed to okay, in our you local gotta, battle of the bands. You, did you throw some credit towards Phil Collins when, in that? Oh yeah, Don Henley, those kinds of things. I, you know what? Absolutely, I, that is not that is not easy. No, no, it's not. No. And um, also, he he wrote a, a couple catchy tunes. I'd say as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. No, I think that they were they were amazing drummers uh, with the energy they they brought to the song, and also with the vocals tied in there. And drummer singers are kind of a rare breed. So, um, yeah, I mean, as far as the Zonky record, it was a lot of fun. I, my favorite was doing James Hetfield on the Sad Gorillas. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because I got to do that part, of course, yeah. you know, because it was like the song, you know, from the Gorillas, which is, um, I ain't happy, feeling glad I got, you know, and that's our bassist singing that. And I'm going, hey, I'm your life. I'm the <laughs> one who takes you there. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I you don't care. care. Yes. Nice. Yeah, yeah, so I do that. That's with that instrumental and then we go back and forth between the songs yeah and then we lose our goddamn minds it's incredible and then all the i mean the, all the drum sounds <laughs> track to track you got flubby snares you got you know ringing piccolos you got like you yeah. know it's just all just a, it's just some great stuff man thank you just really really great and then hey recently i know we're running out of time but you are just your rehab now from your rotator cuff uh, I'm past that now. Yeah, you're all rehabbed um, up, right? Yes, thanks for asking. You're back. I recommend, you know, anyone who questions getting the surgical procedure of something that is attainable, like a just a rotator cuff repair, Yeah, I would just say get with a good orth um, orthopedic and do it. Yes. Like you can't defy science with stem cells, with books that tell you that you can ignore the pain. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I disagree with that. It's your choice. And I know other drummers who've, who've gone other routes and it is a cost effective thing too. Yeah. But if you have good insurance and you can afford, you know, a great orthopedic, you must do it because you are an athlete yeah. and you need to treat your body like it. Was it was like a good six months of rehab. It was for me. Uh, luckily I, I stayed ahead of the, of the schedule and I yeah. was four and a half months ready to go. Nice. But luckily the band was generous and I'm very grateful for it um, to let me, come in at, at you know new year's which yeah. was more exciting for the fans yeah. while they're there and then yeah. here i am like 20 pounds later hey everybody i can't fit in my shirt but here i am <laughs> <laughs> and then uh you know then you then they put me to work really hard this year because we had to make up for a lot of lost uh, uh you know shows. momentum yeah and uh we're doing it and i'm you know i'm working on keeping it you know, rehab by just continuing to, to ice down after shows, which a lot of drummers, I noticed I'm surprised don't really do that. Yeah. I mean, well, right. I, I'm, I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be probably icing things a little bit, um, but you're just on this high after the show. You're like, yeah. ah, and you want to get into your, you know, your, your clean clothes afterwards. You're like, God, I don't want to ice right now. Yeah. You know, pretty much. Yeah. No, but that's, that's really, I appreciate that, you know, yeah. and I am doing, you know, some gigs locally um, coming up. So August 9th, I'm doing a, we're going to do a show 
in town that I'm going to announce on Friday nice. with some, some friends and that'll be amazing. And then I do charity work too. Third and Lindsley. No, okay. won't be there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, if you want to check out my Instagram or, you yeah. know, um, my, I don't, my website needs to be updated, so I'm not going to even suggest that. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys got umfreezemcgees.com or is it, uh, umfreeze? Well, umfreeze.com is umfreeze. my band. Yeah. yeah. And then Chris Myers drums.com is the in construction dated website yeah. of mine. Do you feel like living in Nashville where everything is just so, so song oriented, stay out of the way, giant backbeats? Yes. Because people get this perception of you playing so dense. Yes. Do you get calls to do the boom schmack? Only a couple times. Um, luckily, you know, again, it, when you're doing a philanthropic or charitable thing, I got to do a really cool session with some some heavy players, like some of Garth, Garth Brooks' rhythm section. Nice. And uh, Danny Rader, guitarist, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was very lucky on that one. And um, yeah, I did that. I think Soundcheck Studios before yeah. it shut down. Yeah. Uh, amazing room. Um, and then I did a, a couple events at Basement East. And then, um, you know, I can't, can't recall too many more. <laughs> well, I, I, did, I, I did actually run a charity event I did called the Sleigh Ride, which right. is at the Brooklyn Bowl. Yes. And uh, that went very well with Maggie Rogers, Taylor Hicks, and, um, you know, Corey Wong and... Bill Evans and Jeff Coffin. And, and you raised money the, for... I forget. I raised... It was for a place called David's Den, which is a right. facility here I think everyone should should go look into. It's it's giving an option in the community to go to a, a safe house for mental health counselors mm. and counseling that's not like in-network that you have to worry about like chair, like or insurance-related yeah. claims. It's like something you can go to, be part of team building projects, um, great counselors there. And that's on the east side, I believe. So yeah. David's Den. Yeah. Nice. And, uh, we raised money for them. Um, I'm not currently doing anything else. I'm just trying to get ready for a wedding in three months. <laughs> yes, that's right. You got you're, you got a big life change coming up. Yes. Good for you. Thank that's you, very time consuming because you got to like pick out your napkin colors and how many layers the groom's cake is going to oh, be and where gosh. you're going to sit the parents. Well, luckily, I'm only doing. Am I making things. the right decision? <laughs> no, no, I definitely. <laughs> I couldn't be. This is your first marriage, right? Happier. This is your first marriage. Uh, this is my first, yeah. first and last. Hopefully, yes. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. 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 I mean, it's she's a, she's in uh, in the industry as well, so we it works, yeah. which is great. I forget. Is she an agent or something like that. She works as an event coordinator. Yeah. Um, with Romeo, uh, entertainment group. Yeah, yeah, and um. That's cool. She's just really, she's a, I learn a lot from her. That's I'm nice. very inspired by yeah. that. I, I want to learn from administrative side of the industry more yeah. these days because yeah. all players should do it yep. for good, for the right reasons, of yep. course. Yeah. Educate yourself on the other sides of the business. You know, we just had our new friend, Jason Heartless on, Ted oh, Nugent's yeah. drummer. He moved I know to town. Jason and from he, Michigan. Know, the guy's always got a, you know, he's always got like a vinyl business, you know, selling vinyl records and his dad was in the industry. So he's smart to kind of keep his, okay, it's time. We got to get you out of here. But really quick, the fave five, favorite color. Uh, I'd say um, blue. There's a lot of blues, man. Like a a, not baby blue, dark blue, royal blue. Uh, I'd say probably a royal blue or a light blue. Yeah, nice. Like an ocean yeah. blue. Favorite... Oh, drink well other than sprite here which is sugary yes um i don't know i'd try i'd probably say uh i've i've liked the buy drinks bai buy oh yeah yeah buy 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 from yeah. uh, justin timberlake what is but, it is it like yeah. uh, infused with some sort of a happiness or something or what is well, it? it's like a yeah like a you know this, this energy drink it's got really sweetener energy. in it basically yeah. which so i'm juice. starting to research is there are pros and cons with that but yeah, yeah it's yeah. It's still better than tons of sugar like this Sprite I'm drinking right now. Justin didn't explain it very well. Sometimes so. a Sprite is just, you know, when you got an upset stomach, it's like, boom, there you go. What's your favorite <laughs> kind of food or dish? Um, I love anything with shrimp in it. Uh, shrimp probably. Po -po, shrimp etouffee, fried shrimp, <laughs> deep fried fish, shrimp burger. <laughs> all the stuff. Who's that? I totally set, my, <laughs> I set myself up for that. Um, that and probably like... Uh, Italian food, most of any kind of pasta, which is got to be, you know, 
We gotta we gotta be careful with that. Yeah, Myers. Yeah. What are you? Is it German, Icelandic? Uh, Myers. Nor uh, Norwegian. <laughs> My Norwegian. dad is actually from Norway, and he uh. migrated to Brooklyn in the fifties. You look like you could swing a hammer. Thanks, man. Yeah. Hammer of Thor. Air. Yeah. Yes. Uh, all my right behind you somewhere here. Where's all my that? Scandinavian homies. Yeah. 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 yeah um, so that's that's really it. Um, Dolph Lundgren is is my hero. Yes. <laughs> yes. I <laughs> thank you. So. Thank you. What about a favorite song? Does you have a song that just keeps rearing its ugly head throughout stages of your life? Or uh, be- I'd say uh, um, any police song really. Yeah. Uh, but. Driven cult, to tears. cult of Personality is a badass one because Living Color was a oh, huge influence. Hey, that. what's the thing that Will does? Like, do get him, do God, do get him, do blah, boom, 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 bang. So it's a blah, boom, 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 right? It's just yeah. it's kind of like a polyrhythm, right? Or is it just a feel thing? No, I mean, it's it's in the pocket. It's, gun, 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 it's got the way to be gun, triplets, gun, gun. but it's, you yeah. know, it's yeah. in that. It's, it's, a, it's a triplet feel. Isn't it crazy that we both yeah. just sung it perfectly? Do yeah. God, do God, do God, do God, go, 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 Caveman. Dude, I, he was. He, I really loved his playing and the, the, the fidelity on those records. Mm-hmm. Had it on cassette. Um, favorite totally. movie. Favorite movie. Uh, Three Amigos. Yeah, <laughs> that really holds up. Yeah, man. You know, I love all these complex, amazing, brilliant things going on with directors and their concepts and stuff. But yeah. when it comes to just a whole, a soulful feeling, fun, lighthearted thing, there's nothing better nowadays yeah. than ever. And I just. We discovered the three amigos. Well, we had a it. lot of interstellar <laughs> recently. Everyone's like Christopher Nolan, Christopher Nolan, Christopher Nolan. I'm like, well, what about something stupid and just yeah. fun? <laughs> like the there's movie something that about up, Mary. For me, is Airplane. <laughs> it always holds up. Yeah, yeah, Airplane. Yeah. And then I also nerd out to you know any of the Lord of the Rings. Oh, dude. Yeah. I like, yeah, yeah. like once a year you got to sit down and you watch all of them back to back. Yeah, back to back. You know what's really crazy <laughs> is that you got those four films right Be, that that took up. That uh, was it. Three films that took up three books, right? Yes. Well, four. And then, then you get The Hobbit, which is the shortest book of all that they made three, three movies. movies out of. I know. Yeah. But and, and mm. I know some people who aren't the purists probably not have been, you know, as as uh, content with those movies. But you, you gotta you can't deny it. they're amazing. They're amazing. Yeah. yeah. So once a year, you got to watch all three of those. Um, Brother, so awesome to have you here. Yeah. We can go on and on forever, but I'm a, I, I love this. this I mean, is, I'm a huge fan. I mean, a huge fan, and I'm making Jim a huge fan today. It's comfy. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. It's very comfy. It's here, very comfy. Here uh, in the studio. You know, we, we learned some dance moves. Yeah. Because we like to dance. Explore he, the studio. <laughs> yes. We got, there's more cowbell. <laughs> we should have, we should have a cowbell on site. So everybody uh, show up for the, the big Humphreys McGee tour this year, starting July 4th in... Uh, Westport. Wallingford, Connecticut, Windsor, Westport. Connecticut, Westport, Westport, Westport. Connecticut. and then um, I mean, you're from the East Coast. You should we're both Canadians. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, we're both Canadians. Don't hold it against us. I'm from Milford, Connecticut, and he's from Danbury, Danbury. Connecticut. Danbury. Yeah. yeah. And everybody, check out Chris Myers as ChrisMyersDrums.com. He's on all the socials. Hit him with a DM. Say, hey, man, I love your stuff. I saw you on the Rich Redmond Show. And hey, guys, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review. It helps people find the show. And until next time, hey, we'll be here. See ya. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Rich. All right, man. And Jim, thank you, guys. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. See ya. This has been the Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe. Rate and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.